Good afternoon, and welcome to another epi episode here on CapTech. Today, we're going to look at history and some famous historical figures and events from Ottawa, Illinois. I have uh, named this uh, episode Standing at the Crossroads of History. So as we know, uh, Ottawa is a town that loves its history, and this is most clearly evidenced by our abundance of murals across town, most of them with some sort of historical significance. I wanted to start out with a few uh, older photos of Ottawa. We've got our tuberculosis camp here on the left. Uh, glad I was born after that. And then the tourist camp of Allen Park uh, in Ottawa as well in the early 1900s. As things got a little more modern, we've got a couple beaches here, Pit Pittstick Beach and Blackhawk Beach, uh, along with uh, pictures of the Fox in Illinois, respectively. A few more photos of uh, Ottawa here. Uh, the lower left is kind of how I remember it, um, approximately looking when I was young. Um, we have a large familiar building here that was formerly Rayburn Hospital. And then uh, next to the courthouse here, you'll see a, a picture of when Ottawa ba uh, used to have trolleys a long time ago. And then another shot of uh, a city scene. So I wanted to start out with some uh, historical people that maybe you didn't know about, and the first one, uh, that are from Ottawa, uh, and the first one I wanted to cover was Mr. John Patrick Looney. Um, so before there was Al Capone, uh, this guy was a similar figure, uh, born in Ottawa in 1865, uh, went on to go over to the Quad Cities and become a, a gangster. Um, he had a hand in uh, match fixing, prostitution, illegal gambling, extortion, all the good stuff. Uh, gambling and prostitution took place of a basement of a building which housed the Rock Island News. He had also been accused of extortion and blackmail. He allegedly um, uh, would, would have one of his prostitutes walk up to a man and throw her arms around him um, and then he'd have a uh, photograph snapped and then try to um, extort the guy for money uh, for money for not publishing it in the paper um, at the height of his uh, uh, crime career he had uh, control of approximately 150 gambling dens and brothels um, he served as the model for John Looney uh, a major character in the uh, novel and film A Road to Perdition and was portrayed by Paul Newman. So, yes, Mr. Paul Newman has portrayed an Ottawa man. Next, we have the first of two Brigadier Generals, uh, W.H.L. Wallace. Uh, and uh, although he wasn't born here, uh, he is buried here. Um, his last words were uh, to his wife, we will meet in heaven. Um, and uh, he was regarded by Civil War General Ulysses S. Grant uh, to be one of the Union's greatest generals. Arthur Wagner, you don't hear about as much, but he was also a brigadier general. Um, looked like he was at the bottom of his class, got in the infantry, but then... Um, uh, wrote something called Military Necessities of the United States and the Beth Best Method for Meeting Them. That was back in 1884. Uh, interesting quirk on this Brigadier General. He died on June 17, 1905, which was the same day that he got his promotion to Brigadier General. So maybe it's not my luck. Maybe it's something in the water around here. All right, next, a seldom discussed topic, um, but I grew up next to this guy, uh, Mr. Cawley's uh, ancestors. Um, so uh, a long time ago, there was uh, hearings in the early 50s called the Kefauver hearings where they went after gambling and organized crime. And Kelly and Cawley, you're welcome to pause this and uh, read the article, um, had a, a, a casinos um, around this area. Um, so really a fascinating article and tied well into the national scene, um, kind of uh, where Congress was infatuated with organized crime and gambling, uh, you know, it was after they were infatuated with drinking and before they were infatuated with communists. So it's kind of um, uh, 
an interesting um, uh, piece of history. So a fictionalized version of this hearing uh, actually takes place um, featuring testimony by Michael Corleone uh, in uh, Godfather 2. So Godfather 2 also um, uh representing hearings that Ottawinians, or I should say uh, LaSalle Countyans, uh, people from this area were, were involved in that touched here. So uh, Next we have uh, William D. Boyce, the founder of uh, Boy Scouts of America. Um, and um, I, read a, I read up a little bit of, about this guy um, in researching this, this uh, uh, video. Um, we've probably all seen his grave on Ottawa Avenue there. But um, anyway, in 1901, he owned a paper manufacturing company in Marseilles. It burned down. Uh, he paid the workers immediately and then hired them back as construction workers to rebuild the paper um, so they wouldn't lose income. So you're thinking he's a really good guy. Um, and then you read more about him. And he was so protective of his money that in late 1894, uh, two of his workers were injured, injured by a fallen uh, smokestack and won two grand each in a judgment. And Boyce appealed the case all the way to the Supreme Court of Illinois, trying not to pay him. So um, not everybody's uh, member, you know, image in uh, history is, uh, is perfect, even the guy that invented the, or started the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, next, let's look at Star of Rock. So there are various uh, local legends about how Star of Rock got its name. Uh, the most popular is a tale of revenge um, for the uh, uh, assassination of Ottawa leader uh, Pontiac, who was killed in Cahokia in 1769. Um, according to local legend, uh, the Ottawa, along with their allies and the Potawatomi, avenged uh Pontiac's death by attacking a band of Illini Wick along the Illinois River. The Illini Wick climbed to the to the butte to seek refuge, but their pursuers besieged the rock until the tribe starved to death. Starved to death. Real happy stuff here. Uh, thereby giving uh, the place its name, Starve Rock. The legend sometimes maintain, maintains, although falsely, uh, that this resulted in the complete extermination of the Illini Wick. Uh, apart from oral history, there's no historical evidence that the siege even happened. Maybe it's just a nice name for a rock. Um, an early written report of the legend was uh, uh, related uh, back in 1825. But uh, Next, we have the Starve Rock Murders. So um, related, same part, but in 1960, you know, flash forward in history, uh, three suburban women were killed at the park. Uh, they eventually, um, arrested somebody, um, in connection to the murders, uh, which would be Illinois' third largest, uh, inmate, at least, uh, uh, recently, um, his request, uh, for parole was, even, was denied again, um, but, um, the uh, man that was convicted of it said he'll stay in prison the rest of his life to prove his innocence before he makes any deal. Um, so you wonder why he wouldn't necessarily confess by now. Um, but very interesting, and that happened here. Next, we have to pick the low-hanging fruit. So the Lincoln-Douglas debates, back, known back then as the Great Debates of 1858, were a series of seven debates uh, between Lincoln and Douglas. And... Um, uh, Ottawa, Illinois was one of the cities um, that these took place in. Um, it was a little bit different back then. Um, at that time, U.S. senators were elected by the state legislature. So Lincoln and Douglas were actually trying uh, for their respective parties to win control of the Illinois General Assembly. Um, and the, the debates previewed issues that Lincoln would face in the aftermath of his victory in the 1860 presidential election. Although Illinois was a free state, the main issue discussed in all seven debates was slavery. So as far as results, on election day, as the districts were, were drawn uh, to favor Douglas's party, the Democrats won 40 seats in the uh, state House of Reps and the Republicans won 35 in the state Senate. Republicans uh, held 11 seats, Democrats 14. Stephen Douglas was reelected by the legislator, le le red legislature, even though Lincoln's Republicans won the popular vote. Um, however, the widespread media coverage uh, of the debates greatly 
greatly raise Lincoln's national profile, uh, making him a viable candidate for the nomination um, for president in the 1860 election. He would go on to secure both the nomination and the presidency. And that came through Ottawa. Next, let's talk about sand. So Ottawa has been a major uh, sand and glass center for more than 100 years. Uh, transportation of the sand is facilitated uh, by the navigable Illinois River and uh, the Illinois uh, Railway Ottawa Line. Um, and a little known fact about the sand is Ottawa sand was on board the ill-fated Columbia Space Shuttle for uh, experimental purposes. An interesting chewy nugget of history. Next, an Ottawa history wouldn't would not be complete without examining uh, Radium City. Uh, there's a documentary that dives further into this topic from 1986. We have a statue downtown, um, but what's even more interesting, I think, is that there's 16 areas of Ottawa that are still radioactive. Um, I believe that's why they call us a Superfund site. And then uh, even more interesting, the radium in Ottawa's water supply is not from the radium uh, dial and lumin uh, luminous process, um, you know, the Radium City stuff. Rather, it's a naturally occurring thing and found in water from deep wells all over Northern Illinois. Um, reverse osmosis, uh, actually removes the radium so that our city's tap water complies with federal regs. Very interesting. You would think one had to do with the other, but not really. Anyway, I appreciate you going on this journey through Ottawa history with me. Please uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe. Feel free to comment as well. Thank you.